So Q and A, ask us whatever you would like. Um, I'm pretty candid. I even be cussing sometimes. You can also put them in the chat. I do. Have yeah, if you don't feel like talking, that's totally okay. I have a question. Thank you. It was such an inspiring um, talk and noted down so many ideas. It's nice to know that's so accessible. That's motivating. But um, I had a question. Uh, you mentioned that it was like you're having a background in education also. I was curious in how that translates into your practice as podcast makers and how you, yeah, kind of use it as a platform to educate and how educating at a distance is kind of a thing for you or without seeing your student per se, if that makes sense. Yes, uh, because you're kind of talking into the void, not the void, because I'm talking to Kathleen, right. we're talking, but it's not like the class, the students are going, yes, asking questions, taking notes. It's just like one, I try to put myself in the place of a student, like, because we all have to learn everything. Everything is learned behavior. All information we get is learned, seen. We, our brains have taken it in from some point. So if I'm talking about, I don't know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I mean, we haven't gotten there yet. Can't wait to cover the whole franchise, all 900 movies. Um, so if people don't know about this one, you're just going to give them basic information, who, what, when, where, why, you mm -hmm. know, and just start just like reporters, all the W's, we answer those things. Not really how, because I can't tell them exactly how for everything. But if we know why, or what, again, we know why we're doing this, those students who fit that our audience are going to be tuned in. So we're talking to that audience. Once you know who that audience is, you know what language to use, you know, maybe where to start because say, I'm a rocket scientist and I want to teach children about rocket science. I can't use the rocket science words because they don't know those. <laughs> they don't know those. I have to break it down. Look, this big rock goes around this other big rock. And because it's big, it pulls it towards it. Like that's what you have to say it instead of going, yes, the gravitational pull of this planet. They're going to be like, I, 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 you know, once the knowing the audience, tailors how you speak to people and they'll they'll get your message because that's your audience you you know as long as you understand them but that's mainly what I do but also because I, we do teach at this and we both teach so speaking is not very hard for us um filling in facts is not very hard for us because that's what we do um when you know that when you educate people, you know that everybody doesn't know how to do everything. So you know where to break it down. Instead of breaking it down to two steps, you might have to break it down to five, you know, so that people get it. I hope that answered your question. Thank you, definitely. Could I ask something? I don't know. Oh, Veronica. Yeah, we'll go first because I have quite a lot of questions for people who cannot be here at the moment. So go first and then I will ask all the questions. <laughs> Great. I love that you bought a list. That's amazing. <laughs> so now I was just going to ask, you mentioned something then, which was that you're, you know, you both do a lot of talking and you know each other really well. And so listening to your podcast, I know we've spoke about this before, but like, it sounds like you're a fly on the wall listening to two friends. And I'm wondering for, for those of us who might struggle more with like speaking or get nervous or have you got any tips for like ways of getting around that is should you take your guests out for coffee first or is there any like oh okay <laughs> uh, you know so first of all I'm gonna be very candid I, although I am just easily able to speak to you guys I also get very nervous and I'm like girl I love playing the back I love letting everybody else talk so yes, you could take your guest out for coffee. You also can figure out like, just kind of like, I don't want to say like a date, <laughs> but also like whatever makes you feel more comfortable. Like if you feel like, you know, you want to vet or chat with them beforehand and kind of just get a feel, maybe go back and forth with them. Like, I don't know, via DMs or email, whatever you feel like you need to do that doesn't, you know, of course not weird the other person out, but make you feel comfortable go ahead and do it. Like everyone is different um, and different things work better for everybody. At one point I just pull up like, F it, I'm gonna just talk your head off. And if you decide not to run, that's awesome. That's that's my approach. Yeah, um, definitely you can coax, like, coax people, but talk to them first. Always like, hey, you wanna be on my podcast? Well, let's have a pre-chat first. Um, uh, something that we don't do this, but I know another podcast does this. They send out a Google form in advance and then like get, you know, getting them pronouns. What don't you want to talk about? Like letting them know what language you want to shy away from. So it's not that awkward moment where someone says something wild on your podcast. You're like, 
oh, one, I have to edit that out. Two, I don't know if you can come back <laughs> because um, no, uh, that kind of thing where you can kind of vet them, vet them out, let out like guidelines so they know not to do certain things or this is what we encourage or yes, you can drink with us because some people don't, you know, they're straight edge or they don't want that on in their video feed, like no drinking, no smoking or something like that where other people it's like, oh, our podcast is like happy hour. Yes, we're having drinks on camera, that kind of thing. So you can kind of set your environment again, like why and what what's your feel? What is your vibe? Um, again, I would start with friends first, like take baby steps first. Don't don't go and like, you know what? I'm just about to ask Diane Walters if she about to pull up. And then she say yes. And then you're like, oh my God, now I got to interview Diane Walters. I never did this before. Um, Cause that's stressful as that's very stressful, but you know, maybe pulling up to someone you are comfortable with. Cause then once you get comfortable and build confidence in your speaking skills, your question fields, questioning skills, it's easier to do it. Anxiety usually comes from like, I don't think I'm going to do well, imposter syndrome and things like that. Uh, at least for me, I'd be like, I'm not, even to this day, sometimes I'm like, I'm not a real teacher because I'm younger than everybody. And I'm like, everybody else got like 20 years experience. I'm in here. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like a little dog at the computer. I'm like, um, burr, press the buttons. But in reality, we don't give ourselves, we are our worst critics and we don't give ourselves any credit when we deserve lots of credit you're like, oh that was stupid and it's like it wasn't like okay story time we got to interview Tanana Rivdu I don't know if you know who that is she wrote Ghost um, Summers stories she's a horror author um, if you've seen the documentary Horror Noir on Shudder she's the executive producer of that and also of the Horror Noir um, anthology so we got to talk to her and we were sitting there like oh my god I don't know what to do I'm for one I'm a stan so I'm like um I read her books I'm stressed what if she hates us and but then you get up there and you just say no we've done this before people like us you like go back to the history are people literally looking at you and spitting at you after they meet you no you have friends you have personality you have great things about you lean into those things and don't lean into the negative voice going you're not that good because you know everybody got a little voice back there going mm, you're not that shut up you don't need no one wants to hear that and then you need to be like girl no one asked you you're in the back seat anyway i'm driving close your mouth and then do what, do your thing pretty much. And we had, she said that was one of the best interviews she'd had. And I was like, I cannot believe it. I don't know. I mean, granted, you can't believe it, but then you save that as evidence. So when the next time you interview someone else say, no, someone else said that this don't, don't listen to you, listen to the evidence around you of you doing well. And, you know, also take in feedback when it's not personal. And even if people are being, yeah, I hate you because you, you y'all were coughing on, you're coughing all through the podcast and you're stupid. And I'm like, well, we're not stupid. That's not true. Okay. Oh, we were, we're coughing quite a bit. Okay. Maybe we could edit it out or just stop it. We'll think about it later. Just take it as flat. Like this is feedback. You don't have to listen to the feedback. You don't have to use it. You can just, it's there and you can do what you want with it. So yeah, just take baby steps and build your confidence. Do not listen to the boy saying you suck because they're a liar. They're a hater and their job is to hate. All right. Amazing, thank you. Thanks. Sorry, Veronica, go ahead with your list. <laughs> yeah, I will ask, I will try to ask all of them. So uh, just a little background because uh, in this program we are planning to do a podcast, but uh, we are a group of 10 people. So we cannot really like, um, record all episodes at once. So we are trying of collecting materials and then putting into episodes, even though there will be one main voice who will be like the host um, of this, uh, of each episode. So if you have any advice uh, in regards of collecting uh, material, if we should already maybe ask for a raw material or, or a little bit edited material, if you have some sort of experience, what is the best way to collect like many audio sources for the episode. Okay, so this is, uh, it's gonna be a bit of editing, but if y'all are one using the same platform, that helps because if you're recording, somebody's recording with a studio mic and they're using Audition and they're using this and somebody's using their phone and using a, um, Audacity, those are gonna sound completely different. So one, trying to make everybody go across the board. If, even if y'all have to meet up at each other's houses and maybe use the same mic for different sessions, make a spreadsheet, put everyone on the spreadsheet, make everyone share like everyone's email so they can edit it. You have a schedule and a calendar that all 10 of you share. So all 10 of you know who's recording today, 
for how long. So then when you get those clips for one episode, you can put them all in one folder and then you can just literally stack them up and like edit them that way. Cause I don't know if it's like the first episode is you're talking to, yeah, Cass said do Google Drive is very, like that one ninety nine to $2 a month is worth it to have all those gigs on so you guys can share your work. So you can take separate clips and put them into Audacity or Audition, however many clips and kind of edit them. I don't know if it's like one, the host is like an anthology, like the host is going, now we're going to hear from this person about this and it'll go into that. Then the host can put their clip in. All right, now we're going to move into this person and move it and put that clip in. You can do all of those things. Like you can just stack it that way. But the best thing for that, because it's 10 people, that's a lot. It, sometimes it's hard for me and Kat to be organized together. You know, if somebody forget to put something in the calendar, it's like, oh my God, I didn't know that. What's today? Wow. So really having, you might want to have two people in charge of the schedule not one like two even three like this is the scheduling team like delegating tasks scheduling team editing team so because some people like I said many hands make light work it's going to be a little bit more work to get organized but you have the hands to do it um and then maybe having some people who are responsible for collecting the data and ensuring it's on the drive and maybe giving it a listen beforehand saying that oh we can't do this this the sound doesn't sound good because that will happen you were you'll spend a whole hour recording something and it's trash and you're like, oh, the microphone was making a weird sound. The whole happened to us. If you go to Lovecraft Country, we had to record the second part three times. Um, and it happens like that. So someone going in is like, oh, I heard that. We got to go back and reschedule another time. So then everyone knows how to move around your like, you know, pitfalls. Cause you're going to have a little pitfall. It's going to happen. You got to roll with the punches. But with 10 people, y'all can make it work. But definitely staying organized, having people in charge of, each part of it that's going to work best for y'all. Okay, thank you. Uh, and we are continuing. I have like five, another of them or four even mm -hmm. thing, right? But thank you for the answer. I make a lot of notes from it. Uh, so the question, uh, Second question would be because you uh, you already mentioned how to like uh, get uh, guests, guests and so on, and maybe focus on people who, uh, who is your friend or in the circle, so you have some. Uh, sort of idea who they are and what they are doing but if you really want to approach maybe people outside of uh, our circle if you have any sort of uh, tips how to approach people how, how to formulate emails or not like step by step but some general ideas how to sort of approach people so they feel comfortable with us uh, then or would be more up to participate yeah I mean so the first thing is the worst thing anybody can tell you is no long as you have that in your head that's how I, when i approach all these people so like for just for instance um we're putting together something or wrapping up something that we have coming out um literally starting next week um and this required us to go outside wouldn't necessarily outside of our comfort zone but having to actually reach out to people which is in a in a larger sense we normally don't reach out to this many people at one time um and i always go with the, you know what i'm gonna just write this professional email hey we're looking to do this just as you would do with your peers. Like if you were, you know, applying to a job or trying to tell someone instructions, very clear, concise, this is what I'm doing. Hey, this is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. This is why we want to reach out to you. We hope that you're available. Give some dates and times, you know, trying to make sure you're working within their schedule um, and just being super flexible. And then also, you know, thank you for your time and just even considering, just even opening the email and thinking, you know what, I'm not going to throw this in the trash today. Same thing as you do with everything else and just throw it up to the universe and just know that um, everyone's not going to say yes and everyone's not going to say no. Just make sure that you're prepared to go with that, like have like a couple extra guests that you want lined up pending what you're doing. Um, and also just, you know, be prepared just in case no one says anything, because at the end of the day, you're still going to get deliver the best content, whether they show up or not, they may, if they show up also try not to take offense to them not showing up, like being, you know, just as you would with another person, maybe for whatever reason, they may not say yes. And just because they didn't say yes today, doesn't mean they won't say yes tomorrow. Um, so also learning that art of being persistent, but not like overbearing maybe circle back in a couple months and just say, hey, you know, I just wanted to reach out again because um, they may say yes. I'm um, just roll with the punches. That's honestly, I, I personally, I jazz knows, I fly off the seat of my ass. So it's okay. Like if someone doesn't go with, I'm like, that's fine. I'll be back in three weeks. And then I come back like, remember me? I'm back. And eventually they say yes. But that's also me not learning to overstep my boundaries and not be extremely off-putting. So 
you're your best and you you know yourself best and you are your best um your best cheerleader so you know what's going to work and what's not going to work and if they don't that's fine yeah Ooh. you can also um set up a draft email like y'all can you know have a little zoom call everybody looking at the email it's in a doc or something of, or a few different emails. Like, look, we are such and such with the basic info. So you don't have to type all that stuff. And then you can insert, tailor it to the guests because you, the worst thing you can do is pull up to a guest that you don't really, you just saw them on TV once and you don't really know much else about them. If they wrote some books, you, you should probably at least give them a quick Google search. Be like, hey, you know, I reach out because I saw you wrote this or did this. I am familiar with what you do. I'm not just pulling up as a random person who saw you on the TV. Like, I'm like, no, I am interested in your work also looking in their work it might change your mind sometimes if you want to have them on there or not so it's good to dive into their work and their past and definitely look at their social media and how they talk to people because um you don't want to put someone on your show and then next week they are literally on the summer jam screen on social media because they said some really nasty things um you don't want that so just dive into like you want good people on your show people that you would have a kickback with think of people you might invite to your you know to your home you would let them come inside your house. Those are the same, because that's what our podcast is like our house. If if you, I don't want you to come in my house, I wouldn't have you on my podcast. I wouldn't have that. Um, but again, sometimes if you're doing something more for business or if you're doing like, if you're, if it's tailored to some of those people you don't want in your house, but you need their information. So you're like, okay, it's like we're meeting out for coffee. So it might be something more professional, but definitely if y'all, y'all are professional, you got professional jobs sometimes, or you sent a professional email to a professor, a teacher, somebody before for something, it just make it professional. It's almost like you're emailing a boss about something. Hello, how are you? I would like you to do X, Y, Z, please X, Y, Z. Um, that helps with drafting them up in the um, drive. We like to put a whole lot of things in the drive. Oh, let me just copy paste because it saves time. You don't have to spend 45 minutes. Like, do you want to hear this? Also, you can read the email to, since it's 10 people, read the email to someone else because you got 10 people and they can be like, mm, that sounds kind of pushy. Mm, you got a typo right here. Um, Grammarly did not catch that that kind of thing uh, thank you so for the like just making notes uh okay uh thank you and um the other question would be uh maybe a little bit more personal or like uh, what you're feeling or what do you think about mixing fiction and real interviews it's if it is something that my, might work or might not work from your experience or your like listening to other podcasts it exists and you can do it yeah yeah it exists yeah, like go ahead Jeff. oh yeah no you you can mix some people some people like create whole uh i forgot what it's called but like there's a podcast where it's a whole imaginary world imaginary town where they're they've created characters in that world and they reference those characters even if real people come visit that town or uh, my friend brother ghoulish brother ghoulish does a horror podcast and he has his tomb and he tells short stories and stuff on there but sometimes when guests come we come to visit the tomb the, Im the imaginary world that we're coming into and there's yes yeah, sound effects and stuff all that kind of fun stuff so yes you can do that if you're doing real life interviews say you're doing an interview with someone else and maybe you want to have a comedy side where there's a parody in interview or something and they're just having like this silly talk or fun talk or it's like this over um not over but exaggerated character of maybe someone else you can have that but just like listen to your wife if you're trying to inform people specifically um then it might not work if you're trying to give people facts if we're doing you know fantasy stuff but if you're having fun and it's kind of more of a fun thing then absolutely it works but yeah again as long as it lines up with the why because you don't want people to come for information and then they hear something that's not real and then they take it for you know the surface level or the real thing okay geez. um and if you also have some idea um new ideas by maybe uh more tips or suggestion in terms of scripting or like we're thinking about the structure of the episode and how to lead also the conversation. Yeah, I mean, so we honestly do not script anything at all. If we do a script, it's like a rough skeleton outline, but that's for something that we might like, and it's still very much the talking stage because we don't do it, but we do know a lot of other people who do. Um, just like try to go over it, practice it with each other, um, be open, I guess, because I feel like on some of the people that Jazz, you can correct me, that we've worked with, um, they're not always sticking to the script. Sometimes they might add a little bit of joke here or there, you know, as you would do just 
do what feels comfortable. Like the script is just a guide. It's just a guide, just like with everything else. Because ultimately you want your project or your work to feel like is more authentic. You can still be reading from a paper, but practice it enough where it just feels like y'all are naturally talking to each other versus like, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened. Um, and that's just one way the script could look because your script can also just be very much like something that just keeps everybody on topic, which is super helpful because of course you'll like dive away and have side things. We do that, <laughs> but um, it'll help keep everything really streamlined um, and make it an easy, more flowing situation for everyone, especially because you have a larger group of people who may not be all speaking it at the same time, or even when you start breaking down into smaller groups, it might be super helpful for you guys to do that. Yeah. Also, um, because, you know, we, I've been Zoom meetings or meetings where a lot of people are trying to talk. You can literally treat it like a meeting, not like your conversation, but like, okay, here's an outline. We're going to intro. Okay. Because we if we don't do an outline, but sometimes if we do an outline or like this, we kind of have an outline of we're going to do this, this, and this is the way it's going to go. You don't might not have to have word for word script, but we know that we're going to do intro here. Now we're going to talk about this and there's a 20 minute time limit on this. So, hey, maybe have some hand up, you know, like uh, time, 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 so that people can move on to the next thing, or maybe have a hand motion if you're on video, especially if you're on video and you, the video's not going up. You because then you can like maybe have a hand motion of wrap it up, or you're off topic, or something like that, where it's like, yeah, cues that's the word. Thank you, Kathleen. Cues was like, you're off topic, like reel it in so that, that we can cut time. Because the longer the episode is, the more you have to edit it, the, the longer it's going to take to edit it because it's long, you know. So, if you want to cut it down to like an hour or two hours, there are some podcasts that have three, four hour episodes, and I'd be listening sometimes, you know, but you can like, um keep your time that can be a part of the scripting you can script some things and not others like Kat said was ad-libbing like I think a pod mortem is one where they script what happens like when they, they do one movie at a time and they say basically what happens in the movie that is the script the side conversations are not scripted so they'll be like they did this they did this they did this and they did this that script now conversation real quick all right next script they're gonna say what happened next then their side conversation. It can be like waves of script and free form, script and free form. Okay. Hey, oh, on um, uh, this will be the last last question. So if I remember Alice was thinking about question that you can ask after this. Well, the last one question will be because you already mentioned some like platforms and uh, uh, tips regarding software, but uh, if you think it'd be a good idea to record it the interviews through Zoom or maybe let's stay outside of the Zoom, what your idea on Zoom. And also if you have uh, your favorite like editing software like Audacity or like any other, if you edit or not. So what's editing software for a complete big, big, not complete beginner, but somebody who done editing, but not editing for podcasts, maybe you would uh, say is the best choice. Um, so for, the editing software, we have been, Audacity is what we found out was super easy for us. Like, I know how to computer, Jazz knows how to computer, but also like, we definitely had to go to YouTube University to get it together. So as intro, we're still very much like an intro baby podcast, like we're toddlers now. So we're just like kind of getting the steps, maybe getting into our threes. Um, but we felt like it was very, um, just like very easy to use, very consumer friendly, something you could do really quick. Um, you can always use other platforms. I feel like I had used, not Audacity. What is that other program? I Logic. Thank you. Logic. Logic as well. And if you're looking for something that's online, um, where back to your question of like recording with stuff via Zoom for um, video, you can use Zoom. We felt like we've just recently used that a lot. Um, it's okay. It's Zoom. Um, and it works. It does what you need it to do. Um, but those other things that Jasmine was talking about, we said it's uh, Zencaster and the other ones as well. Um, they We also found them to be super helpful. Um, you still might have a little eh with the camera quality. So we're actually personally trying to figure out what site would work best because some people look really good. I'm not really sure if it's the site or the program itself plus your camera. There's a lot of variables. Um, but those are also helpful. And that's actually with that platform, you'd have to edit the videos together. So big key. You'd have to edit it because you'll see like an uh, individual video, like if it was Jazz and I talking, I can see Jasmine's video, I can see my video. 
and I have to now put them together using a program versus where Zoom or if you record it like with Google Meet or something else, we're all sitting in the same room and it's just one big conversation. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Just something to add to your belt in terms of like more editing and then software you have to use. Yeah. Um, and to piggyback, yeah, you might have to do that. But again, because y'all have a team, you might be able to do that. But if you're doing 10, definitely Zoom is going to be your best bet. And because Zoom, you know, it goes in and out, you know, with internet, because you can probably, I don't know if I can hear, I can't hear when I'm going out, but you can hear if I'm lagging or something like that or someone else. So maybe investing in ethernet cables to plug your computer directly to the internet so that it doesn't lag as much that helps um, for Zoom, making sure people have microphones and maybe having earbuds. So then it's not getting the um, feedback that might help with Zoom also. Um, investing in the pro package so that y'all can, you know, have it talk as long as you need to speak for and other, some other things come with the pro package as well. So you can like, Zoom is a decent option. There are several people who I know record over Zoom, several people, and they're able to edit it down where it sounds good. Cause you do get this, I believe you get the sound file and you get the video file where you can kind of edit. Um, so that works as well. But at least with Zen, Zencast, yeah, people do use Skype as well. But also with like Zen, Zencaster, the video quality was shaky, but the sound quality was not. Um, if you have microphones, the sound quality was better. It probably might be easier to edit the audio, but it might not be easier to edit the video. So it depends on how many people are talking at once. If all 10 of you are on here, Zoom. If it's like two or three, you might be able to use a different platform and still get the, you know, download the file and put it in the same format as all the other videos. So that might be helpful as well. Okay, thank you so much for your all your answers. I made down notes, so thank you so much. No problem. Anybody else got questions? I'm typing another platform in the chat for StreamYard too. Oh, yes, definitely StreamYard. StreamYard is a good time. It does video and audio. And that's it the also live. Puts so it out there. Yeah. You can go and, live. And, and, if you, and if you record with the recorder, uh, the computer coming out, from a Zoom, for example, is that something to do? To do? You mean like, like I record the video? I record, the, no, the audio more. I record with a Zoom, I don't know, not the Zoom platform, but with a, I don't know, with the rec audio recorder, I record the audio coming out, coming outside my phone call or my video call. Is that creating interference or is it? Uh, hmm. I don't, like, know, I don't know because I've never done that. Okay, because I was thinking maybe that could be. Give it a try. Yeah. Uh, it, truly, give it a try because it might work. Um, but you you would know. You would know. And honestly, it, yeah. it's going to create interference. You'll hear it right away. Yeah, do a test run. Like do a, um, hey, let me record two minutes of us just bullshitting. Just saying, bloop, 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 blah, boo, whatever. And then listen back and be like, oh, this sounds fine. We can use this. Uh, versus, oh, I hear audio, I hear static, or the sound is not clear. And then, or if it's a little not clear, and you might be able to edit that down in Audacity or something else, because you can cancel some noise, you can edit some things. So if you can like, oh, it's not that bad, and this is the easiest way for me to get this done, and I can edit it, sure. But if it's like, ooh, this is not good, um, you can, you know, switch to a different platform. Always do like a test session. Could I could I ask another question less so about the, the well the sort of technical side? Firstly, Veronica, thank you so much for your list of questions. I know you're you're one of the, you're heading up the part of the podcast team, right? Well, uh, I'm with uh, Ludovica James. We are like we don't have like uh, the head of the group, but we are still sort of trying to. Uh, get, we already have some sort of structure, but uh, we still don't know how to like. Um, still lacking maybe in the terms of production side, how to be best to put our ideas to be like functional. And But we want mm -hmm. to do like tests or test recording as soon as possible. So hopefully then we will see how it goes. 
Yeah. Oh, thanks for thanks for preparing the list of questions though to represent everyone. That's all, that's totally amazing. Thanks, Ronka. <laughs> no, I just I wanted to ask one other thing that was kind of more about the so like you picked the topic of horror, and obviously you're both like extremely knowledgeable about the subject. And I was a totally separate question to maybe even the podcast itself. But um one thing that's come up a lot through throughout this course is using horror as a means of like sharing messages so it's quite a good you know it's not gonna notice by people in the group that like you're both educators and and maybe horror is actually a really good way of like sharing viewpoints from underrepresented people share it like subcultures coming together to like show what's wrong with society and like it's uh, uh, what drew you to that initially um, or did you get together and go like, wow, we really need to talk about this? Or how, how did that come about? Um, well, so one, we were just like, well, this is what we're going to do. I asked SB, like, do the podcast with me. Um, and we both are really big horror fans. Um, I cannot run a Dolo podcast. Like I said, I, girl, who am I talking to? It's not going to work. Um, but we normally just talk about horror and sci-fi and anything that's happening to us around us anyways like in depth so just why not like you know just turn on a mic I guess um and then to your point about as we educators like we you heard our podcast like we um it, to to an extent nothing is really much off topic um for us like personally like of the black horror is real like that is a real thing a lot of stories that you see a lot of these like you know like for example tales from the hood uh, it's all grounded very much in reality. Yes, there's no zombies, or is there? But it's it's all very much grounded in reality. So we just talk about our experience. Um, you know, we recently what's what did we just recently talk about, Jazz? And I was very upset. Get it out in time. us. Get yeah. It out so us. At, yeah. So we finally had that conversation. Um, and obviously, those are two movies that are super recent that are sparked a lot of conversation, and whether it was around race relations in the United States or in the world. Um, the haves and the have nots, some um, societal structures. Um, and just going through that, like it makes me angry. Um, so we talk about that. We talk about, of course, like this is this movie, but then like, why is this so effective to me? What about this scares me? Like being be going in, being in an unfamiliar neighborhood, being black in an all white space. Why does that make me nervous? Like what if it does make me nervous? But why how does that affect me? How can I relate to these things? These are, this is basically why, you know, horror jumps out to me. What about you, Jess? Um, horror, of course, I, you know, we're both in fans since young tots. We were, first it was seeking the thrills. Like, I like to be scared, like a roller coaster. Ooh, seeking thrills, woo. But then it transformed once I got old enough to truly understand. And I just wrote a piece. It's not out yet. It'll be out sometime in February about Tales from the, a love letter to Tales from the Hood because I think I watched, I was like eight. But by eight, especially being black, I've already experienced racism directly. I've already seen police brutality. I grew up in the 90s. I've seen gun violence. I've seen police tape and, you know, across the street from my house and chalk outlines. I saw that. So when you watch, I watched Tales from the Hood and I was like, oh, I am engaging with this media at a different level than I did Texas Chainsaw Massacre or Chucky or well, not Chuck, Child's Play or, you know, Friday the 13th because one, I see black people who look like me. One, these are, these horrors are problems that I physically can see with my eyeballs outside. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh no, this, this, huh? <laughs> this is real life. And a lot of times horror is a mirror to society. Um, and it shows things, even if it's metaphors for things that we go through, like the Babadook is like, it talks about grief. Um, I, I don't want to spoil the Babadook if you have not seen it. It is a pretty good movie that is a pretty much a metaphor for grief and you can like, you know, think about it and talk about it. But horror is a vehicle for education or exploring things that scare us. And a lot of things scare us because people do not like change. People do not like conflict. People want to act like everything is okay and it's not. And who I think horror is a good vehicle for everything's not okay. Nothing is okay. <laughs> Even like we watched the thaw, the ice caps are melting. That is happening. The horror was based around the ice caps melting and a parasite that was frozen is now not frozen anymore. And we're not equipped to deal with that. That could happen. Not maybe not a parasite, but diseases, bacteria. That is terrifying. But also the ice caps oh. are literally melting. And I'm like, I mm, it, it's horror really turns up where like, hey, look in the mirror. Do you see this happening right now? Zombie apocalypse. 
replace zombie with coronavirus and imagine how many people will be zombies right now if you caught the virus and now you're you're walking dead like if it was airborne or whatever like that we we, we will be decimated in a month like it's just like imagine it we're just thinking of these things and how they mirror how people act someone's always gonna hide a bite in the zombie apocalypse just like people are gonna come to work sick coughing and be like, I'm not, I'm fine, I'm not sick. What are you talking about? As you cough onto the keyboard and everything else. Like again, horror is just a perfect vehicle to really show us ourselves. And sometimes ourselves is ugly. And we need to see that. You need to see that. You can't fix problems that you do not see. You can't fix problems if you pretend they don't exist. So yeah. Amazing answer. Thank you so much. <laughs> Any other questions? all right i think they're good to go there's mm -hmm. no more questions okay oh okay. wow well we appreciate you guys for having us yeah. and taking time out of your lives we know the time difference is crazy <laughs> so, yeah yeah it's morning time <laughs> on a saturday <laughs> yes yeah, thank you so much for taking time out of your weekend to join us. <laughs> it's been so amazing. Yeah, and, and I think we've learned a lot. One thing that would be really helpful if you're happy to do so is to share, if you're up for sharing your contact details, um, in case uh, yeah, any other questions might come up later. Also, um, so as part of this course, we're going to be making this... Oh, I've got stuck. Oh, no. Um, we're we're going to be making... Um, podcast that will firstly go out on worldwide fm so we'd love to share it with you <laughs> at a later date and we'll we'll give you more details about all the researchers projects and everything but thank you so much amazing no yes, problem I've, ag I've aggressively put our email in the chat so please 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 feel free to reach out to us thank you so much guys and we definitely want to hear your project so if it's in another language i don't know it's okay girl i'm going to pull up the translator and i'm going to be aggressively listening because i need to know I want to know what y'all talk about. So please email it to us because we're we're not, you know, super, we're busy, but not that busy to not listen because we got time. Thank you guys. Happy we appreciate there. you guys sharing space with us in time. Thank Yes, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Talk soon. Keep in touch. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.